Welcome to Having Coffee with Smog. Together uh, with Gary, we'll be discussing the role of manager. So thank you for joining us, Gary. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> so uh, Gary is manager here in Amazon. Uh, he was my manager for a short period of time. And right now you're managing uh, other managers as well. Indeed, yes. So I, I, you know, I'm, as you know, managing three engineering teams. But um, two of those engineering teams I manage for other managers. So a lot of people to manage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, it becomes easier. It's like when you've got other managers there that you know you can rely upon and depend upon to you know, do what you would have been doing before. Exactly. Um, you're in this role for how long? Ooh, I can give you a bit of a history there. So, yes, go ahead. Yeah, so you know, if I give you my career history, mm -hmm. I think you've heard me say before, I'm kind of an accidental manager. Exactly. My yes, passion the... started with software engineering. And, um, like, I, I did an unusual career path that I started out in telecoms mm -hmm. a fairly long time ago, 30 yes. years ago, um, as an apprenticeship, um, which is interesting because Amazon started apprenticeships again now. So I started out in telecoms and I actually did climbing poles, digging holes. And actual engineering. Oh yeah, actual engineering. And All I also right. did call centers and like how to manage ticketing systems. Um, and at the time, um, like software wasn't like as prolific as it is now. Mm -hmm. There was very much, you know, data center teams and mainframes and big systems. Right. But things like Visual Basic were coming into the fray. And it was probably a, my a first introduction to Agile program. I was in business teams, but I was automating things. Right. So processes that were very labor intensive, I got involved in writing programs to automate them. I see. So you were software engineer at some point, like full blown. Yeah. So for 15 years, I was full on passionate about software engineering. And then I ended up in this interesting situation where I became involved in more and more meetings. I so I would be the person that would go to meetings and come out and talk to people about what our next thing we should be working on. Um, yeah, so I became like a team leader. Proxy yeah. between them and us. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Who was the volunteer to go into the meetings? And it was like, oh, we don't want to go, Gary. Can you go to that meeting? Or, you know, Gary, we need to plan something. And for, because I had the experience mm -hmm. of, you know, I, I could get involved in the planning side of things. Um, so there's two aspects to this, a willingness to communicate mm -hmm. and engage with people. Um, and that helped coming from a background of being in business teams, of knowing how to speak with you know, different people from different backgrounds and interpret engineering speak, coding into right. business and vice versa. So I kind of hope that this will uh, help people that are thinking about transitioning from SDE role software developer, programmer, into more managerial circles. Is this a good idea? What is the most gratifying about this role right now? Yeah. And what are the common misconceptions that you mm, had before going into managerial role? And what is your view on the thing right now? It's probably an interesting thing because I, I never had a perception of ever being a manager. Yeah. I just happened to go down that path, but there was two aspects of this. You know, like you're talking back in year 2000, yeah. to, between sort of 1998 through to 2005, right. career paths were very much oriented. If you wanted to progress through an organization, mm -hmm. you went management. There was very little, you know, in Amazon, we have this fantastic thing of, and you see this a lot in other organizations, of engineers can have a career path that is pure tech. You can make very senior levels within Amazon and be a pure technologist. Yeah, that used to be. That wasn't the case, like uh, yeah. So time. in my days, you know, you'd, you'd maybe get to a technical architect, but from a and a technical architect is like a he still senior, senior engineer. engineer yes. Yeah, and then you'd still not, you know, you wouldn't be managing people, and you'd have broad impact. But then after that, it's management. You know, you end up becoming a people manager. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that maybe led me to so that's sort of a career decision nowadays of, you know, do I want to manage people mm -hmm. or do I want to continue being a pure technologist? Right. Now, now I look back in hindsight, what I'm really passionate about now, you know, where I look at sort of the values of organizations mm -hmm. is 
So if you look at Amazon's leadership principles, yes. um, engineers are about insist on high standards, dive deep, um, you know, very engineering practices. Mm -hmm. And a manager's role is about hire and develop the best. Yes. So the great aspects of being a manager in an organization like Amazon, and really, you know, if you want to go into a, a managing role, is there is a degree of you know having control of strategy and things like that, but it's seeing and helping others grow and develop their careers. When people are doing wrong and are going down the wrong path, course correcting them, mm -hmm. but also then having you know positive influence, you know, giving positive aspects of this is great, keep doing it, you're doing the right things, as well as highlighting the things that you know not quite so good. You know, maybe that wasn't yeah. the greatest way of approaching things and helping coach them to do the right thing and succeed. It depends what kind of organization you're in. So some of the other things that managers often get involved in is the project plan mm -hmm. and the negotiation with other teams right. and budgeting and things like that. Yeah. And then, you know, there's those seniority levels, you know, as a, as a manager, as you move like senior manager, director, you're getting into territory of a much bigger impact, broader impact and less engaged with engineers. When you become talks about becoming a manager, actually formalizing this, what were you afraid of? What turned out to be true or not? And what would you say to yourself from that 2006 today? Maybe it's worth touching on how things have evolved as well as, as right. managers. So in the early days, um, and you still get a little bit of this, it was a, like you've heard the concept of command and control. Yeah. Often people move into management because they feel they want to have control of things. Mm -hmm. and there is still a level of that. You know, even for me, I like seeing that, am I in control of the situation? Right. And, you know, my anxiety levels go up if I think, <laughs> if I don't feel like there's some level of control and, you know, things are not going the way you kind of expected it. So you've got a blended role, which is, as a manager, you probably want to have some level of control over things. And in the early days, it was very much about like laying out a plan and let's execute to this plan and making mistakes like micromanaging. Being oh. involved in people, like telling them what to do is the biggest mistake you can make as a manager. And, and if I was to give advice to people moving into management, okay. that really is, you know, that's a cardinal sin kind of thing. Just don't go there. Like you may know engineering, you may know how to code, but the best thing you can do for your engineering team is show leadership, which is enable people to think about the right way of doing it mm -hmm. without telling people how to do it. And also, allow them, allow them to, make, yeah, to make mistakes. Yeah, exactly. And that's where I was going to go next. You, you've got to be willing to allow people to safely make mistakes. And, you know, that's a key word, safely. Yeah, and safety is that you've got, like, other things you'll hear is like managers should provide top cover. Mm -hmm. You know, be pr a protector of your team. Right. Um, and it's, it's kind of different because you can sometimes get the tension as a manager of you're going to be expected to deliver results. Yeah. So Amazon has deliver results. There's going to be pressure to deliver results. Yeah, one of the leadership principles. Exactly. Yep. Um, and so you can get pressure to do that because you're going to have stakeholders, you can have timelines, mm -hmm. but it's also protecting the team to enable them to also like, you know, we do learn and be curious. And like, hopefully within our teams, we still have those, you know, you get time allocated to develop and grow yourself. Right. And that's an enabler of a manager as well. You know, you, you've got to get the right balance of time. It's understanding the right time to apply pressure and the right time to back off and give and protect the team to allow them to recuperate. Right. You know, you, we see it here. You ebbs and flows of really hard work, really hard work. And it's always hard work, but we try to give time to recuperate and, and think about yourselves, think about your careers as engineers. We talk about goals a lot here. Yeah. So we're going to have a goal or we're going to have a theme. And this is like in six months time, we want you to deliver X or Y. Right. So this project needs to be delivered by this date. Mm -hmm. As a manager, your job really is then to set milestones to ensure the pace is there. So trust and verify is something you hear at Amazon. It, like it's, it's not a leadership principle. But, you know, I trust in the team to deliver, but I'm going to verify. And how do I verify? So I use mechanisms to verify. And Amazon talks about mechanisms of, you know, what charts can I look at so I know the needle's moving? Yes. So in Agile, we talk about burn down charts. Exactly. And, you know, is the burn down chart going well? Mm -hmm. Are we meeting milestones? Right. So I've set the mission and I shouldn't be there. It should be micromanaging. Oh, what, have you done this task? And why haven't you done that task? So you should be allowed to know what the user story is or the theme is or the mission, what that is. And then you break down your work 
how you're going to technically deliver it and you execute on it. I, I don't need to know the details of what design pattern did you use. Mm-hmm. And in some ways I can have an opinion, which is someone to verify, but you know, I'll bounce the idea out there and say, why didn't we use this pattern? Okay. And you have to be able to defend it. Yeah. And then yes. you question your, your own judgment. Did you, did you actually go the right way? Right. And yeah. if you can defend it, okay, you are more enforced in this position. Yeah. Right. Other way, maybe we should like go around and figure it again. Yeah. So, you know, we do iterations and, and that's part of the, but that's why, you know, we, we tend to be agile here at Amazon is because it allows you to get the feedback loop mm-hmm. and an early feedback loop was we successful. So, you know, we talked about safety again. It's you know, knowing that you can safely deliver in a period of time. Right. And then we adjust the project plans. You know, if we're not, if we're not moving at the pace in the complexity could be higher than we expected. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't keep driving to meet that date. It's about let's move the date out. So that's the manager's job is to then go and negotiate with the stakeholders and say, we might have to move a load of other project plans mm-hmm. because people are depending upon us to deliver something. Right. And on occasions, we just like, it's going to be impossible to meet that date. Mm-hmm. Or pull external resources from yeah, other projects. Exactly. We bring people in and that, that's to help get it back on track because sometimes that date's immovable. Yeah. 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 And you know, we have to make compromises and it's the manager's job to get from the engineers what compromises can we make. Mm-hmm. And that could be, you know, maybe we're not going to insist on high standards to the degree that we would always want to. You know, and that's why we end up with technical debt. Yeah. And then we have to consider how we're going to pay that technical debt off. At what point do I need to pay this off to get us back on track to have a high quality product and constantly evolving that product? I see. Would you consider going back? If you just I, like, if, magically could if, do it. If I could go back in time, I would probably, for me personally, oh, that's such a hard question, <laughs> would I? <laughs> Part of me says, yeah, I would love to go back to being an, what, what I would call an individual contributor, just yeah. a coder. Mm-hmm. But then there's that other part of me who likes to see the bigger picture and be involved in the bigger picture. And you can do that as a senior level in an engineering right. realm. So but then you- would I miss that helping people grow? Yeah. And, and you, even so, you know, even as a senior engineer, you're involved in hiring development the best. We see, you know, we constantly encourage people to interview people, yeah, bring them in. A graduate comes them. in, yeah. even as a, you know, a, a relatively new member of the Amazon community, mm-hmm. you're encouraged to help them grow and develop as well. Because everybody wants to see the next person succeed. Exactly. Um, and, you know, and see them grow and contribute to the team. Because that's how we scale and accomplish how much we do accomplish. Because it's not all dependent upon one person. It's like a cell. We want to multiply. And when you multiply, you become stronger. Right. From what you're saying, there's a lot of things to be gained from this position. So we would recommend it to people like that are considering switch transition. Yeah. Like you need to be sure about what, what values is it that are important to you. Yeah. So if you're in Amazon, you'd look at our leadership principles. And even if you're not in Amazon, you can look at the Amazon leadership principles. And then ask the question, well, what would be expected of me as a manager? What are the leadership principles that are going to be different to what I'm doing as an engineer? What key traits or features of, of character should have this person that is transitioning into so, this role or thinking about going there? So it's going to be to some degree earned trust. Mm-hmm. You know, can you earn the trust of your colleagues, your team members? Can you also think big? Can you right. think beyond the horizon? And so not shying away from like being the one who's pushing the team and they're all thinking, why doesn't Gary get it? Why is Gary pushing us as this without turning around to everyone and saying, no, we need to do this because of this. Because that's, if I'm telling you what to do, that's command and control again. And I could be wrong. So our right a lot comes into play here because Amazon has a tremendous number of very, very clever people with lots of different ideas and ways of approaching things mm-hmm. and as a manager you've got to be willing to let go and let them come up with the ideas you add it to your own ideas mm-hmm. and encourage everybody collectively to move us to a better position that, as a as a team we're in a better position than one individual saying this is how we should do it and you right. hopefully you've seen that within our teams that oh, we course. constantly challenge each other we constantly have discussions we do design reviews mm-hmm. We never accept the fact that the first design is going to be perfect. Yes, it's very hard to get the first one right. Yeah. <laughs> have we ever had that? 
Well, I haven't met. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us here uh, and having coffee with Smog. Uh, I hope that you uh, enjoyed this uh, short interview. Good. It's, good. Uh, it's now uh, your privilege to nominate next person to invite uh, to invite him uh, together to next episode of having coffee with Smog. Go. Who do we pick? I. I. Oh, maybe try one of the product managers. Product manager. So let's think of Mac or Okay, okay I'm going to do that. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you.